Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video in the series of pattern recognition and machine learning. In this video, we will be focusing on the model selection. In the last video, we already found out that we have a specific way on how we define a polynomial that we are trying to fit to our data. So we have a sum that goes from zero to M. M is our degree of the polynomial. And we start out with just the W, uh, w0 times x to the power of 0, which is 1. That's why we don't see the x here. Then we have w1 to the power uh, times x to the power of 1. And then we basically just continue. And we finish with wm times x to the power of m. So this is the polynomial that we where we will adjust the parameters w. So this one, this one, this one, and that one. Uh, to fit the polynomial as close as possible to the given data. But now the question is, what order should we choose? Because we have an infinite amount of numbers that we can choose from, and we need to find out a, a clever way on how to do that. Let's uh, go through some different cases. First of all, we start with a degree zero. So we have here in gray our... Uh, sine curve and the data. The data again has some noise. If we start with a degree of a polynomial degree zero, we have a very poor fit. You see that uh, we have basically a straight line and the data is uh, spread very far from that line. So we have a very large error. If we choose a model of degree two, we have a uh, basically a parabola, and that is a very good fit. Very good fit in the sense that the error is close to zero. If we choose a degree of uh, a polynomial of degree nine, we have an excellent fit because the error is actually truly zero. But we have those oscillations. Let's have a closer look. So the purple line is our graph that we found by adapting the uh, the parameters w so that the error is zero in the end so every each data point is learned by heart by our graph basically but then it's true that yeah we have a error that is zero but is it actually what we want because we know that actually it's supposed to be a sine function but this does not look like a sine function to us so we have those oscillations and those oscillations come from very large uh, parameters of uh, very large numbers in the parameters of w and this is not necessarily the case that we would like because if we have those uh, big oscillations we do not generalize anymore but we'll come to that later for now the only thing that you have remember uh, have to remember is that generalization is the biggest problem in machine learning. It is very easy to have a poor fit and it is very easy to have a fit where we learn all data by heart. But learning the data by heart is not equivalent to being, a, uh, to being able to predict new data correctly. So for now we introduce a new error. So we have the root mean square error this is this function. We choose the same fun the same error function as before. So that's uh, one over two times the square of the fun the polynomial y minus the target vector, and we divide. In this case, we divide it by n, and n is the amount of data. And this allows us to compare different sizes of data in different sizes of models. So let's have a look at our root mean square error when the polynomial in when the degree of the polynomial increases so we start out with a very large error this is that one and we as when we increase the degree of polynomial the polynomial we slowly go down and eventually it will be at zero so it will look something like this it definitely will be uh zero at some point because we will have enough parameters in our polynomial function to represent each and every data point. 
But if we look at a new polynomial point, at the, at the new point that was not in our training data, we see that the error goes down, down, down. So we are getting better and better and predicting that point that we did not use to adapt the uh, parameters w. But as soon as we cross a certain threshold, we see that the error rapidly increases. And this is not something that we want. We want to the we want the error to go down 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 and as close to zero the same as in the training set but this is just the test set remember we do not use those points we just test if the polynomial that we found is actually a good one so this is kind of a paradox right because we have the polynomial of degree nine that is at least as good as the polynomial of degree three because the degree three is just a special case of the higher polynomial so it's actually should be the same because you can just transfer or set some parameters of the polynomial of degree nine to zero and get the uh, polynomial of degree three but in our case this doesn't work the other point is that might be confusing is that the sine function that we are trying to learn that the sine function actually contains all terms of all orders so i wrote the sine function so you see that we also have a sum and this is our x to the power of 2n plus 1 so if we write that uh, that function that goes from n to infinity we also have a lot of uh a infinitely uh, infinite of infinite amount of polynomials so you might think that increasing the polynomials will get us closer and closer uh, to this function but it actually doesn't the polynomials with those large values uh, are getting tuned to the random noise of the data so if we increase the number of parameters that we can tune and in this way also increase the degree of the polynomial we will learn the randomness of the data and the randomness of the data is not helpful for us to uh, learn a sine function so this is why we stop at a certain degree a uh, certain order of the polynomial to not learn the randomness in the data and right now you might be thinking well this is just another uh, just another thing that you have to consider when uh, selecting those degrees for the polynomial. So you not only have to solve the uh, parameters w, but also select the right degree, uh, the right order of the polynomial. But this is not good for us people because we want to keep the problem as simple as possible. And in that point, we have the regularization. So this is something that will help us to reduce the parameters w and reduce the degree of our polynomial that we do not have to select anymore so it will automatically select those parameters and get us the uh, the degree of the polynomial and get us the right parameters w so i just summarize again we have our function y and depending on the degree that we choose from m0 to m9 for example if we have 10 data points uh, we will get either a bad fit or a perfect fit where our error is zero but we have of course those oscillations and now we know that those oscillations represent the learned random noise and our problem as i said is the generalization in machine learning so we can predict new points with uh, a high degree of certainty we introduced a new error function so that we can pair different models at two different sizes of data we saw that our means uh, root mean square error goes down to eventually zero uh, the bigger the polynomial gets but we also see that if we have a test set at a certain point our error explodes and basically goes through infinity when we so when we and uh, when we choose 
points that we did not see during our training. And this is basically, again, the paradox that why should, why is that when a degree nine should be as good as degree three and the sign has also an, an infinite amount of polynomials. And this is because we are tuning to the random noise of data that we actually do not want. So this noise is present and we can't get rid of it, but we definitely should not learn it by heart. And because this will destroy our, our um, predictions of points that we did not see so far. To solve this problem, we will talk about regularization, but this will be on another video that you can either find on the right or maybe in the description down below. I hope you liked this video and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for your attention.